So in this first problem, we're asked to solve for x, and I hopefully you notice that this is an interior angle, one that is formed by two chords. So if you remember the property, that would be the interior angle equals half of the sum of the intercepted arcs. So these chords make this arc as one of the intercepted ones and that arc. So the angle x equals half of 112 arc plus 88. So we add these two things together, 112 and 88, we get 200. One last thing is to divide or multiply by 1 half. So x is going to be 100 degrees. Okay, so this problem... If we color in the arcs that we know, 82 is up here and 30 is down here. So if we use our interior angle, that would help us find either one of these two. Because the angle has to line up with your arcs. Okay, so we can't actually solve for x directly. So that's first solve for w which is half of 82 plus 30. Okay, so x is not in line with either one of these two angles. But we soon find out that w is going to be 56 degrees. Hopefully you remember from way earlier in this course that any two angles that make a straight line are called a linear pair and have to add up to 180 degrees. So if we know that this angle is 56, we can solve this equation real quick. And get that the value of x is going to be 124 degrees, not 56. So make sure you're solving for the angle that is lined up with your two intercepted arcs. So here we notice 31 is made by two secants. So this is an exterior angle. So an exterior angle is always half of the big arc minus the little arc. So for 31 degrees, x is the big arc. It's the arc farthest away from that angle. And 45 is the little arc. So that says the angle 31 equals half of the big arc x minus the little arc 45. So my first algebraic step is to multiply by 2 to get rid of that to wretched 1 half. 32, 31 times 2 is 62 equals x minus 45. So now I add 45 to both sides. And I find X to be a wonderful 107 degree arc. Just like that. So here we have another exterior angle made by a tangent and a secant. So angle equals half of the big arc minus the little arc. Okay, but it's true, we are not given a lot of information. Okay, so clearly, I hope you can see that x is the big arc. So if I took this and I went from where the tangent touches all the way around to the secant, that is my x angle. Okay? And then this is my inside or my little angle right there that has nothing associated with it. So we have to figure out what goes here. And this is how we do it. So we know that this much is 96. Okay, this little green part out here now. That helps us figure out what the entire, all the way around this circle could be. Because the entire circle has to add up to 360. 
So if I do 360 minus 96, the rest of this orange thing has to be 264 degrees. Okay? Now, we know that this much, this doubled up section, blue and orange, is X. Okay? What if I told you this was 200? And you'd be like, oh, that's easy. This much is 64. And if I said, okay, what if this is 64? You'd be like, oh, that's easy. This much has to be 200. But because you don't know what X is, we can't just say that this is some nice number. But we can apply that principle of subtraction. The entire orange thing is 264. This much is x, so the leftover is 264 minus x. Whatever that x happens to be, we subtract it and we get whatever this is. Okay, so that is a very important principle to remember whenever we're solving these problems, is that we might not be given enough information but we're smart enough to figure out all the information. So 264 minus, oh, that doesn't go there. Sorry, let me subtract it. The big arc in this case is x, and the little arc is 264 minus x. And I put it in parentheses because it is an expression, and expressions go in parentheses. This is the entire little arc. It has multiple parts. So now let's solve. Let's get rid of the one half by times and by two. Times by two. So 80 equals x minus 264. So minus 264, but also minus negative x. And minus a minus, I hope you understand, is a plus. So now we can add 264 to both sides. And that gives us 344 equals 2x's. And lastly, when I divide by 2, 3 go, 2 goes into 1, 1, 4, 7, 172 degrees would be the value for x. 172. So once again, we have an exterior angle. So the angle equals half of the big arc minus the little arc. So in this case, X is the little arc. It's the one closest to your exterior angle. <clears throat> and this whole entire thing is your big arc. <clears throat> now, notice it doesn't have anything written there. So we're going to have to use our brains to fill in stuff for ourselves. <clears throat> so hopefully you remember the entire circle is 360 degrees. <clears throat> and I know this much is X. So if I know this much, I can find the rest by subtracting. So I take my entire circle and I subtract off what I know. So I know this much is x, and that gives me my big part. So 55, my angle, equals half of my big arc, 360 minus x, and it gets parentheses because it's an expression minus a little angle of x, sorry, arc, big arc minus little arc. So now let's solve. Multiply both sides by 2. 110 equals 360 minus 2x's. A okay, minus x and minus x is minus 2x. So then I subtract 360 from both sides. Negative 250, well, that's okay, because this is a negative 2x on that side. So now when I divide both sides by negative 2, my negatives cancel each other out, and I get a positive 125 degrees, 
as a value for x, that littler arc in this circle. Okay, for this last one, once again, we have an exterior angle. 81 is the big intercepted arc, the one that's farthest from that angle. And this, the part that we don't know, well, part of the part that we don't know is your little arc. But thank goodness, this arc gets tracked back to this angle. So for this problem, 18 is an inscribed angle, which means that this arc is two times the inscribed angle. So this arc is 36 degrees, because that's two times 18. So x is half of 81 minus 36, which is half of 45. Half of 45 is 22.5 degrees. So the exterior angle for this problem is going to be 22 and a half degrees. Hopefully you have some more understanding of how interior and exterior angles work with circles.